I want to show you some samples of some drawers that I've made. Uh, I think this is the best way to show off your craftsmanship. There's nothing like a piston fit drawer. Uh, I'm going to show you how I do it. Most of what I know I learned from Alan Peters. And I've got several samples here. In fact, I got a lot of samples here. Here's one. This is actually a little thing that we used to drag around to the wood shows to advertise our drawer making workshop. But when it fits properly, you should be able to close it by just pushing in one corner. Shouldn't bind. There should be no side to side slop at all. There has to be up and down to, for seasonal movement. But you want that to fit and just slide. Literally a box in a hole. That's all it is. There's no, no guides. So you've got to start off with a properly made carcass. When I say properly made, top and bottom have to be parallel. Sides have to be parallel. They can be slanted a little bit, but they have to be parallel. And then the box or the drawer fits in there just like a glove. I'll show you some more examples. This, this is a, a little more utilitarian. The only thing I did differently here, I brought the dovetails all the way through, but they all operate the same way. No, no side to side slop at all. Close it from just pushing in on one corner. So I can't detect any side to side movement in any of these drawers. But of course, as I mentioned, there's gotta be a little side top to bottom. Here's another, this is actually one of the uh, projects that we used to build in the drawer making workshop. But this one's actually made out of walnut with cedar drawer bottoms, pine on the front, aspen on the back, lots of different woods. Same idea, open it up and be able to close it from pushing in on this one corner. And you can feel the cushion of air. And this same, same thing, just a, a properly made carcass with a box that fits in there the way it should. Now I'll show you this one, this little tiny one, same idea. Ooh, look at that one, binds, not good. That one needs to be waxed. That could fit a little bit better than that. I'll show you some more down here. This is a, uh, a jewelry box made out of walnut with sycamore on the drawer sides, but closes really nice. And this one has eight small drawers in there. Same idea. No side to side slop, just a little bit of movement top to bottom. This one's made out of bird's eye with walnut sides. So let me show you how you do that. I'm not going to go through the whole process, but I'll give you a, an idea. So here are the parts that will make this drawer. Here's my drawer front, drawer sides, and drawer back. So the way I typically do it, of course you make the frame for or the carcass first, and then I'll take this drawer back, and I'll go in and I'll get it to fit the opening exactly. Top to bottom tight, side to side tight. When I say tight, meaning as you get it to fit into the opening, you should have to push it the same amount top and bottom. It wants to be snug, but not, not tighter one side than the other, or not, not tighter at the top than it is at the bottom. Once you get that done, and the reason why you start with the back, if you happen to screw it up and take off too much, you can always go get another back. But your drawer front is made to match. In fact, this piece came right out of there. Uh, figure out which way it goes. Yeah, like that. So if you, you, now this is oxidized a little bit, but that grain runs right through. So I can't risk messing this up. That's why I go in first and get the back and use it as a template. Once I get the back fit perfectly, I'll take the back and referencing off of the bottom, line up the two bottoms, and then I would take a, uh, a knife, I actually use a plain blade, and I'll go in and I'll scribe both ends onto the second piece, which is the drawer front. Now I can go over to my shooting board and I've got a line to follow. Instead of coming over here and trying to fit trial and error, I have to just take it to the knife line and then that should be the same size as the back and it'll fit the same way. Once you've done that, you start on your drawer sides. And the first thing I do with my drawer sides is I get them, always reference the bottom. But once the bottom has been planed and it's nice and straight, I don't touch that again. Any alterations are going to happen on the top. And I want that to just barely fit in there. 
meaning I want it to be snug. Get that to go in front to back, get them to length, then I can go ahead and start to build the drawer. And when I build the drawer, okay, so if I set my marking gauge to be a little bit less than the thickness of the drawer side, that dimension is going to be scribed on the inside face of the drawer front. So when I put, and of course on the back as well, when I put the drawer together, because the marking gauge line was less than the thickness, when this comes up tight in here, it's still going to be proud, meaning the drawer is going to stick up beyond the ends of the pins, both front and back. Once that is dried, and you now plane it flush, when you get the drawer side down to the pins, front and back, it should now fit the opening because remember, the drawer back and the drawer front were sized to that opening. That also allows you a little bit of room to clean up the top edge to get it the amount of slop that you need or the amount of space that you need in order for that drawer to fit top to bottom as well. This one's a little bit snug, but it still needs to, I, fortunately I'm still, I've been working on this for a while, so I'll let that acclimate a little bit more and then I'll go back in and give it a final fit, get it perfect. So that's drawer making in a nutshell. Requires a lot of precision. I will say this, in order for this drawer to work properly, when it sits on a flat surface, it can't rock. You can't have corner to corner movement. That's got to sit perfectly flat. I just said that. Hopefully it wasn't sitting on any dirt. I should say, I hope it was sitting on some dirt. That rocks. Let me take that over to a, a known flat surface and check it. Okay, no movement there. It's time to flatten my bench again. In order to get that kind of a, uh, uh, that level of precision, you have to use a shooting board. You go in with your shooting board and make sure that all of the pieces are square before you start. If you use a little 140 trick where we use a skew block plane to cut that little rabbit, that'll help register the two pieces so that when you put this together, there's no twisting. And by that I mean I assemble this corner, then I assemble this corner. So now I've got a U-shaped piece. The last thing to go on is the other side because the dovetail only goes together one way. So you put this one in and when you come over here, if you've got to move it, shift it one way or the other in order to these to line up, you've already lost your fit. So satisfying to start tap tapping this one together and to come over here and see that they're lined up perfectly and you just have to tap them into place. Then you know you're going to get the fit that you're looking for. Any twist, you can't get rid of it. In the process of trying to get rid of it, you're going to lose that perfect fit you're aiming for. Takes some work, but it's a lot of fun. It's very satisfying. You got to be careful. Can't be in a rush. You want to make sure your materials are good and dry. Always nice to use quarter sawn lumber if you can find it for your drawer sides. Anything that'll minimize drawer movement. Anyway, that's drawer making in a nutshell.